Hello everyone, welcome to an academy. Let's crack me PG. I'm Dr. Shilpa Dinesh. I'm a practicing pediatric consultant and an educator in an academy. So I have an experience of teaching undergraduate and postgraduate medical students. And I have done my MBBS and MD from Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences. So today we'll be discussing about the gastrointestinal bleeding. So the various causes for the upper and the lower GI bleed. Okay, so we'll be discussing about that. And before that, I would want to talk a little bit about an academy. An academy is India's largest online learning platform. So there are a lot of benefits you can avail from this platform. Firstly, the daily life classes. So there are uh, regular classes, everyday classes happening in this platform by various educators. You can attend your favorite educator's class, engage in discussions, ask your doubts, and these doubts will be cleared immediately in the uh, live chat box. Also, whenever you're preparing for your entrance exam, you need to have a structured approach. You need to plan well. So by the time you give your exams, you would have been revised really well so that you can retain better. So here in an academy, all these courses are structured in line with your exam syllabus. And this is a huge boost for your preparation. Also, uh, you, you, when you're preparing for an, any entrance exam, you need to evaluate yourself. You need to know what are your strong areas, what are your weak areas. All this is possible if you attend as many uh, quizzes and tests as possible. Here in an academy, uh, there are regular mock tests and quizzes happening and you can attend these uh, quizzes and you, it will be easier for, your, for you to evaluate yourself, analyze yourself, and then you can concentrate on the subjects which are weak. Also coming to the unlimited access. So once you subscribe to the sub subscription, you get access to all the classes. So even if you have missed a live class, you can go back and watch the recorded classes again and again. All this in the comfort of your home, in the comfort of your own device. These are the top educators in the platform and they have regular classes happening. Kindly check their class. And all the 19 subjects required for your NEET PG preparation are taught in this platform. These are the ongoing courses in our platform right now. Okay, now as you can see, the need, this is a NEET PG subscription package. So you can see that the NEET PG subscription package varies from one month to two years. So I would suggest the 12 month or the 24 month subscription, especially for the ones who are in the internship third year or the final year. And the ones who are giving their NEET PG 2021, for them the six month subscription should be useful. Okay, the six month subscription is 20,000 and using my course Shilpa 10, you get a 10% discount and it will come up to 18,000. And the one year subscription is 25,000 and using my course Shilpa 10, you get a 10% discount and it will come up to 22,500. But the two year subscription is 30,000 and using my course Shilpa 10, you get a 10% discount and it will come up to 27,000. Okay, so I highly recommend this platform, especially from the uh, using this platform from the beginning part of your preparation will take you a long way. Also, when it when when coming to the uh, price part, the prices are very reasonable compared to the other uh, platform. And another very uh, very ad big advantage of this platform is there are various educators. So okay, so for the same subject, there are three four educators, and you can just go and follow whomever you want to. So it is your choice. Okay. Anyway, so now we'll go to the topic. So coming to the upper uh, gastrointestinal bleeding. So what is the upper uh, intestinal bleed and what is the lower intestinal bleed? So how do you divide this? So basically the upper intestinal bleed is proximal to the ligament of treats. So where is the ligament of treats? So ligament of treats is at the junction of the level of the duodojejunal flexure. flexure. So at the duodo Duodeno, duodeno jejunal flexure, flexure. Okay, and if it is a lower intestinal bleed, it will be distal to the ligament of the a ligament of trees. Okay, so now coming to hematemesis. Okay, so what is hematemesis? So hematemesis is vomiting blood, right? Fine. What about melina? What is melina? And hematemesis is generally, I mean, hematemesis always suggests upper GI bleed. What about melina? So 
medina is a passage of black tarry stool okay and this again suggests upper gi bleed what is hematochezia okay so hematochezia is when there is a bright uh, red color stool passage of bright red color stool so this is a, a lower gi bleed okay now what is hemobilia okay if there is any bleed in the in the biliary tree what is pseudo hemobilia if there is bleed in the pancreas okay so these are the various types of the gi bleed uh, with definition i mean uh, you need to know the characteristics i mean basically if it if they give you medina and they tell you where is the bleed happening so you should know it's the upper gi bleed and it's a black tarry stool okay so these are the conditions so now coming to the upper gi bleed okay so in the upper gi bleed what are the common causes so you we have divided over here into a neonate what are the common causes of upper gi bleed in a neonate or an infant then the upper gi bleed in a children a child above more than 2 years so this is how we have divided so one thing is first of all the first most common in a neonate if there is gi bleed meaning if when you get an uh, gi aspirate which is red in color first thought in the first day of life you should always think it could be because of the swallowed maternal blood okay swallowed maternal blood and other causes could be esophagitis that could be secondary to any gastro gastritis or gastroesophageal reflux okay gastroduodenal erosions or ulcers sepsis hemorrhagic disease of the newborn okay esophageal varices if there is any vascular malformation or if there is any foreign body infection because of the uh, pressure effects and the bovine milk allergy next coming to the child above 2 years okay firstly esophagitis okay again esophagitis could be because of secondary to a gastroesophageal reflux or it could be because of certain medications okay next coming to gastroduodenal erosions or ulcerations portal hypertension sepsis coagulopathy or stress caustic ingestion so a caustic ingestion is any acid kind of uh, acidic ingestion that can cause what is malady base uh, tear what is malady base tear where does the tear happen in ma malady base tear okay so in the malady base tear the tear happens at the esophageal uh, the gastroesophageal junction okay at the junction of the esophagus esophagus and the stomach okay so one of the commonest cause for malady ways uh, tear is that uh, if if there is a very um, forceful vomiting okay where there is a very forceful vomiting that can lead to malady ways tear okay next is the henock shonen purpura if there is any vascular malformation tumors like leiomyoma lymphoma or teratoma coming to the management part so first of all the management is supportive okay supportive management okay you have to have a very good venous access in these children these children will require blood transfusion okay and also in these children maintaining the input output uh, monitoring is very important and uh, oxygen supplementation if the child requires should be given okay so blood transfusion is given blood transfusion is given to maintain a hemoglobin of 7 g per deciliter because there is severe blood in uh, blood loss in these children so a minimum of 7 g per deciliter should be maintained okay some children will need antibiotic prophylaxis okay so what are the specific treatment specific management so that includes a combination of pharmacotherapy therapy and endoscopic 
therapy. Okay, now uh, early administration of uh, so another very important thing is we have to give certain vasoactive drugs. Okay, so the main drugs which are used in uh, upper GI bleed are octreotide and octreotide and som somatostatin. Okay, so drugs like somatostatin. and octreotide are given okay so this will what will these drugs do so this decreases the splanking and the azygous blood flow decreases the splanking and the blood flow okay and uh, this infusion should be given for at least 24 to 48 hours and gradually gradually it should be discontinued or stopped gradually tapered because otherwise suddenly if you stop the child can rebleed okay gradually stopped okay so next coming to the endoscopic therapy so there is endoscopic sclerotherapy So endoscopic sclerotherapy. So here what happens? What is the drug which is used for sclerotherapy? So the sclerosant which is used is 1% ethoxy sclerol. Ethoxy sclerol. Okay. So this is the drug which is given. So basically uh, one form, form is the endoscopic uh, sclerotherapy. Uh, and another form is the variceal ligation so if there is any varices that is ligated okay that is tight so variceal ligation so what happens in variceal ligation okay so basically you pass this ligator inside and there is a cylindrical column which will suck in the varices and then you put a band at the neck of the uh, varices okay so this is how uh, a variceal ligation is done Okay, so both of these therapy have 90 to 100 percent efficacy to control the blood loss. Okay, next coming to the gastric viruses. So in gastric viruses, so this time I was talking about endophagal, uh, esophageal, sorry, esophageal gases. Now I'm talking about the gastric viruses. So in gastric viruses, what happens? So what is the therapy which is used? So in the gastric viruses, there is endoscopic ingestion of a adhesive glue. Okay. So tissue adhesive glue. So endoscopic ingestion of a injection of a tissue adhesive glue. So the tissue adhesive glue which is used are, it could be either N-butyl, 2 cyanoacrylate and butyl 2 cyanoacrylate or it could be isobutyl 2 cyanoacrylate So now this uh, tissue adhesive glue hardens the blood up, uh, within 20 uh, seconds of uh, the glue getting in contact with the blood. In 20 seconds, it, it hardens the, uh, it hardens when it comes in contact with the blood. Okay, so next coming to the tamponade. Tamponade of varices. So when the endoscopic and the um, pharmacotherapy uh, doesn't work. Next, you go for the tamponade of the varices. So over here, what you use is the Sengstaken taken Blakemore tube. Okay, so Sengstaken uh, Blakemore tube is used. Over here, what happens? It has an esophageal balloon and a gastric balloon followed by a, a balloon which has a perforated distal end so that we can aspirate the stomach contents. I will show you in the next slide. I'll show you the picture of the Sengstaken Blakemore tube. Okay, so this tube is very uh, cheap, but uh, it helps in 75%. It has 75% efficacy while controlling the uh, bleed. 75% efficacy. But this is used only when the pharmacotherapy and endoscopic uh, therapies fail. Okay. 
then after this uh, the next option available is the transjugular intrahepatic photosystemic shunt that is called tips so what is it transhepatic sorry transjugular transjugular intrahepatic photosystemic shunt transjugular intrahepatic photosystemic shunt okay so over here what happens now you enter through the jugular vein you, uh, the uh, the tube is uh, the catheter is passed from the jugular vein to the superior vena cava and then it is passed to the hepatic vein okay then into the uh, portal vein so this is uh, by uh, uh, this is how the catheter goes and you uh, uh, inflate a balloon and from that a mesh passes okay so there is a mesh mesh process is uh, passed so this will help in the maintaining a uh, communication between the portal vein and the hepatic vein and as a result this will reduce the portal vein pressure so this is used for portal hypertension okay so this will reduce the portal uh, pressure uh, and uh, it helps in the management of portal hypertension that is tips okay what is the surgical management so if there is any ectopic varices that in the above uh, the above uh, therapies won't work so the, that time the surgical management includes a porto cable shunt or a esophageal staple transection devascularization okay basically devascularization that is by the esophageal staple transection so this is when there is an ectopic varices where the above modes of therapy can be done so one is the now coming to the um, like we will have a, a quick uh, revision so one is the endoscopic sclerotherapy over here the sclerosant is passed or uh, is injected to the varices that includes the 1% ethoxy sclerol next is the variceal ligation so over here you pass the endoscope and the cylinder sucks in the varices and then a band is formed at the neck of the varices that is varices ligation next is the gastric varices where the endos there uh, through the endoscopy you inject a tissue adhesive glue so either it could be an n-butyl 2 cyanoacrylate or isobutyl 2 cyanoacrylate so what happens within 20 seconds of coming in contact with the blood this tissue adhesive glue hardens okay so next is the tamponade of varices so tamponade of varices is done when the endoscopic or the pharmacotherapies don't work so here you you, you use the sense taken black uh, to catheter over here and this has a 75 percent efficacy in controlling the blood blood, uh, blood uh, bleed next comes to tips that is transjugular intrahepatic photosystem action over here through the jugular vein you enter the superior vena cava and then you enter the hepatic vein and the uh, portal uh, Thing. so what happens is over here a balloon a, when you pass it a, a dilated balloon is uh, passed and from th through that a mesh is um, a, a mesh is also put which is an expansile mesh then what happens there is a communication a communication between the hepatic vein and the portal vein is established and as a result the portal vein pressure comes down okay so this is the sense taken blakemore Things taken. Blakemore catheter or the tube. So as I've told, I was telling you. So here there is the esophageal. This is the esophageal balloon. This is the uh, gastric balloon, and this is the tube which has perforations which will aspirate the uh, contents. Okay, so the bleeds. Okay, so this is called. So and this. Uh, balloon when you uh, inflate the balloon it will have the tamponade effect on the bleed okay so that is why uh, this is you so when you when the endoscopic and the pharmacotherapies do not work the next uh, mode of treatment is the tamponading the bleed that is the sense uh, using the sense taken blakemore tube okay fine so now coming to the lower gastrointestinal bleed so the lower intestinal bleed uh, gastrointestinal bleed now what did i say any bleed distal to the ligament of treats is called as the lower gastrointestinal bleed. Okay, so what are the causes? So in the neonate, okay, in the so in the neonate, uh, first of all, uh, the main cause for lower gastrointestinal bleed is colitis. So colitis is 
the distal part of the gastrointestinal tract, right? So, so in children, in the neonate or infants, the causes of colitis include infectious colitis, cow milk protein allergy, ne necrotizing enterocolitis, Hirschsprung's enterocolitis, then Hirschsprung's disease, enterocolitis, systemic vasculitis. While a child above two years, it could be infectious colitis, inflammatory bowel disease, tuberculosis, pseudomembranous colitis, amoebiasis, cytomegaloviral infections, or neutropenic colitis. What are the other causes which can cause lower gastrointestinal bleed? So one is the anal fissure, intussusception in the newborns, uh, infants, intussusception is common, duplication cysts, arteriovenous malformation, rectal prolapse, Meckel's diverticulum, okay? So in a child above two years, anal fissures, polyps, okay, single rectal ulcer syndrome, single rectal ulcer syndrome, Meckel's diverticulum, hemorrhoids, rectal prolapse, enoch shawn lane popura, arteriovenous malformation, tumors like leomyoma. So these are the causes for lower gastrointestinal bleed. So, so now coming to the history. So how? Uh, first of all, you need to uh, take a proper history in these children and you have to examine the child, okay? So now any child uh, uh, who comes with blood in the stools, blood and mucus in the stool, uh, infant blood plus mucus in the stool with abdominal pain. So you should think about some colitis, okay? So infectious colitis is more common. Okay, next. A newborn with abdominal distension. Abdominal distension. In intolerance to feed. And other systemic uh, symptoms. So what could this be? Like lethargy and all that. So what could this be? Can you guess? This is a newborn, okay? This is a newborn. So that could be necrotizing enterocolitis. Okay. So now another thing. Uh, there is history of delayed passage of meconium. Of meconium. There is constipation, there is abdominal distension and pain, abdominal distension and abdominal pain. So what could this be? Main thing what I've told you is history of delayed passage of meconium. What could this be? Okay, so this is, this is a typical history in Hirschsprung's disease. Okay, so next, uh, uh, a child has started on cow's milk a month back or so and the child has developed uh, loose stools with blood and mucus. What could this be? So this could be an allergic colitis. The most common one is the cow milk protein allergy right okay now another a child was on antibiotic and child develops severe loose stools bloody loose stools antibiotics therapy plus bloody loose stool bloody diarrhea what could this be Okay, so that could be pseudomembranous colitis. Okay, so another history. If there could be after sulcers in the child, there would be blood in the stools. After sulcers. Blood in stools. Joint pains. Iritis. What could this be? Okay. 
so that it could be a case of inflammatory bowel disease fine next uh, there is a history of painful passage of stools painful passage of stool but once the child constipation once the child passes stool there is a streak of blood streak of blood in stool what could this be so this could be a anal fissure remember streak of blood in the stools next there is history of constipations this history of constipation okay there is straining uh, difficulty to straining while passing stools straining will be there and history of digital evacuation of the stool digital evacuation what is the cause of bleeding in these children so this is the solitary ulcer rect uh, solitary rectal ulcer ulcer syndrome okay history of digital evacuation difficult to to uh, uh, pass stools constipation another very important thing red current jelly stools okay we'll put it over here one second so red current jelly stools is seen where red current jelly stools anyone knows red current jelly stool so where is it seen so it is seen in a case of interception okay so this is another very important where where do you see painless uh, bleeding painless uh, rectal bleeding tell me few of the conditions where you see painless rectal bleeding okay so you see painless rectal bleed if there is a polyp if there is a meckel's diverticulum okay if there is varices so these are all condition where there is painless bleed okay painless lower gastrointestinal bleed next so what is the approach so when a child comes to you with the lower gastrointestinal bleed so what do you do okay so a child who comes with a lower gastrointestinal bleed low i bleed so you get a, first you get a upper gi bleed check if there is any upper gi lesions okay so if any lesion is found then treat the child okay if it is negative okay then you get a ileo colonoscopy ileo colonoscopy and you get a technetium 99 for tectinate scan especially this is for a meckel's diverticulum and a duplication cyst okay so it comes positive then treat the condition then treat if it is negative then what will you do then uh, and still the child is having bleed then you get a, a angiography okay so if the angiography is normal if it is normal and the child is still bleeding you might have to do a exploratory laparotomy and you might have to do a uh, intraoperative enteroscopy intraoperative intraoperative enteroscopy okay now this uh, there is uh, no bleeding if there is no uh, significant bleed then it could be a small bowel you have to evaluate the small bowel small bowel evaluation should be done and then you have to get a cet cect okay or a cap and a capsule endoscopy 
एंड अ बलून एंटेरोस्कोपी बलून एंटेरोस्कोपी ओके and with the angiosco angiography a lesion is detected and treat the lesion so this is how a child with lower gi uh, tract bleed should be uh, in uh, should be uh, approached so this is how you approach a child with lower gi bleed okay so what are the investigations okay another thing is how when you examine the child so first of all when a child comes to you one is history which you take and another thing is examination a few things what you need to know about uh, on an examination is okay so let me tell you so if a child has fissure and anal tax fleshy anal tax fissure and fleshy anal tax so all this is from op guy okay fleshy anal tax then what should you think so then you should it's suggestive of crohn's disease okay now there is a lower gi bleed and then there is a child who has orobuccal pigmentation orobuccal pigmentation what should you think about okay so it could be peutz jeghers syndrome peutz jeghers syndrome okay now you get a abdominal examination and you feel a sausage shaped lump sausage shaped mass so what could it be shaped mass or lump what could it be it could be intussusception okay Uh, so these are the very important things you have to think about lower gi bleed another thing is if there is a palpable purpura you should think about henock schonlein purpura okay so next coming to the investigation so when if you have if you have a child who has a colitic presentation so a large uh, colitic presentation you have to get a cbc you have to get a esr you have to get a stool examination so stool examination you have to check for trophozoites or for clostridium uh, deficit stool a stool examination as a clostridium deficit that can cause pseudomembranous colitis right next you have to get a colonoscopy copy with biopsy that's for his uh, histology culture you have to get and immunochemistry okay next if it's a non colitic uh, presentation then again you have to get a hemoglobin so another thing non colitic meaning there could be a systemic uh, presentation so cbc you have to get a prothrombin time okay again get a colonoscopy okay now ultrasound you should do usg abdomen especially if it is intussusception Uh, uh, uh this thing a uh, technetium scan if it is macular mac diverticulum okay if it is macular diverticulum or duplication cyst ct angiography is done ct angiography is done well if there is any aneurysmal bleed there is any aneurysmal bleed okay so if there is an obscure bleed you don't know where is the bleed then you have to get a capsule endoscopy okay capsule endoscopy or a double balloon enteroscopy okay so this was for today so today we have discussed about uh, lower gi bleed okay and this is the picture of can anyone guess what what is this picture of so this is a red current jelly stool so this is seen in intussusception okay yeah fine so now uh, to today we have done with today's topic of upper and lower gi bleed so now we'll have a fast uh, recap of all this so basically i have told you what is an upper gi bleed and what is a lower gi bleed so anything proximal to the ligament of treats is an upper gi bleed and anything distal to the um, ligament of treats is a lower gi bleed okay so hematemesis is basically vomiting blood and that is generally an upper gi bleed and if melina is present that's a black tarry stool it's an upper gi bleed okay hematochezia is bright red stool and 
kidney case are lower jaggedly hemophilia if there is bleeding in any in the biliary tree it is hemophilia and pseudo hemophilia is it bleed in the pancreas okay so these are the various causes of upper gi bleed okay and the management is supportive you have to get, get a good venous access these children will have required blood transfusion see that the hemoglobin is at 7 gram per deciliter antibiotic prophylaxis is required another the specific treatment includes pharmacotherapy and endoscopic therapy the pharmacotherapy the drugs use this somatostatin and octreotide what does it do it decreases its flattening and the azygous blood flow and by 24 to 48 hours it helps in gradually uh, it helps in stopping uh, i mean it helps in stopping the blood soon and for 24 to 48 hours you have to uh, continue the infusion and gradually and taper it and stop because once suddenly if you stop the child can rebleed and the various other therapies which are included in the management of gi bleed is upper gi bleed is one is the endoscopic sclerotherapy and the variceal ligation so endoscopic sclerotherapy and variceal bleeding had 90 to 100 percent efficacy next coming to the gastric varices so here you use a tissue adhesive to uh, by endoscopically injecting it okay next is the tamponade of varices so tamponade of varices is done when the endoscopy and the variceal bleed a uh, varicell ligation not work. the above pharmacotherapy and the endoscopic therapies don't work so here you use a sense taken like more tube so sense taken black more tube is this okay it has a esophageal balloon and the gastric balloon and then there is a perforated distal tube which will allow in the aspiration of the gastric contents and this uh, ballooning will help in tamponading the bleed okay so the next therapy is a tips that is in case of a portal hypertension you, you use transjugular intrahepatic portal systemic shunt okay so over here a um, a catheter is passed from the jugular vein and it by uh, and it is passed through the superior vena cava and goes to the hepatic vein and then the portal vein that is how a communication is made and uh, through the uh, catheter you pass a mesh and the uh, this helps in reducing the portal venous pressure and uh, if none of the above works uh, especially if there is an ectopic varices then a surgical therapy is required so there you use the porto cable shunt okay so these are the causes of the lower gastrointestinal uh, tract bleeding so now i've told you uh, based on the history you can come to diagnosis of so many conditions okay so the uh, i've explained in the uh, uh, previously so basically based on the history you can have a clue of which uh, uh, condition it could be okay and coming to the approach of a lower gib so first of all even if it's a low, up, lower GI bleed, get a upper GI uh, endoscopy. If the lesion is found uh, treated, if it is negative, get a ileocolonoscopy and then get a uh, uh, technetium protectate uh, uh, scan. It will help you to rule out Meckel's and duplicate, uh, duplication cysts. If it is negative, get an angiography if the child is still bleeding and then get a exploratory. Uh, uh, if the angioscopy, angiography is normal, get an exploratory laparotomy and an intraoperative enteroscopy. If the angiography is uh positive then you get treat the same okay and if you get a technetium scan and if it is negative and the child is not bleeding much then you do a small bubble evaluation you get a cect capsular endoscopy and balloon enteroscopy should be done so this is how you manage okay so these are the various investigations and based on the examination also you can come to a diagnosis of the same okay so this is a red current jelly stool and it helps uh, it, it is a it is you it is classical for interception so this was for today tomorrow i'll be talking about various other topics miscellaneous topics on the g, uh, g in the jit so most which i have not uh, taught in the last few classes so i'll be uh, teaching it tomorrow and today at 4 pm in the subscription platform i'll be teaching um i'll be teaching hemorrhagic disease of the newborn and nec that is necrotizing enterocolitis so that will be at 4 pm so that is in the subscription okay fine so if you're subscribing to the subscription use my code shilpa 10 and get a 10 percent discount okay also there are free classes in the unacademy or uh, uh, unacademy app if you uh, take the unacademy app there are free classes also that is called as a special class so there are various special classes happening but uh, subscription classes are exclusively for the students who have subscribed to the subscription platform. Okay, all the best, study well. Uh, and uh, we'll come tomorrow again with a new class. On So in tomorrow's miscellaneous class, I will include intussusception, Hirschsprung's disease, so various other topics which I have not covered in the previous class, even portal hypertension. Okay, so good luck, study well.